Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me in your Bibles. Back over to Matthew 6. And maybe as you're doing so, we can also review a little memory work. Who has one of the verses from um, this week's assignment? Go ahead. Uh, good. Thank you. The way that seems right to do a man <clears throat> is a foolish way to live life. We, as Christians, serve a God who speaks, and he has given us the capacity to hear his voice. He has given to us his spirit, the earnest of our inheritance. The Holy Spirit lives in our hearts. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, doesn't he? So we're not left to our own devices. We, as children of God, can and should live according to God's will for our lives. We don't have to do what just seems right. Amen? Amen. Who has the other verse from Psalm 111? Go ahead, please, Jim. We took some time on that passage, as you'll recall, <clears throat> discussing of how understanding follows obedience. We're instructed to fear God, move in fear before him with regard to how we live our lives. There are some, there are a lot of people who would acknowledge the existence of God, a heavenly being, an almighty, uh, deists. Maybe they, they would acknowledge God, uh, there is an almighty supreme being who, who uh, set the worlds in place, but then just left man to fend for himself and try to do the morally right thing and in the end, well, God will decide who makes it and who doesn't. Uh, there's a little bit more to biblical Christianity, that, or there's a whole lot more to biblical Christianity than that. We're to fear God, the one who made us. We're to do his, world, his will, his word, amen? And understanding follows. Uh, in our arrogance, we sometimes want God to explain why and how and... Uh, and our pea brains can't grasp it all. We're to do what we're told to do. And any understanding that, that, that we may gain follows obedience. Doesn't come first and then we obey. No, we obey first and then understanding follows. Amen? Amen. Of good understanding have all they that keep his commandments to do his word, do his will. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, here in Matthew 6, we're going to take a little time to review. Our, we're talking about God's will for our lives, God's will for your life. And we also considered that um, the subtitle is uh, Living Life Without Regret. Amen? Amen. You don't want to look back on the last couple hours and regret the way you spent the time, squandered it, wasted it. Uh, maybe some, did something overtly sinful. Don't want to look back on, on any uh, segment of time. Don't want to look back on the day Come to the conclusion of your day and think, no, I did my will, my plans. I wasted it. Had an opportunity to honor God, but instead I did what I wanted to do. Don't look on, on decisions, uh, moves that we might make and think, no, that was plainly my will. That was not God's will. Don't, have, don't want to live with those kinds of regrets. We sure don't want to come to the end of our days or stand before the Lord Almighty and think, what a waste. One small, brief moment, uh, uh, opportunity, a life, and it's a but a vapor. We make way too much of this earth existence as though it's the end of all. No, it's just the beginning of life forever with God Almighty. Amen? And how right it is that we would live our lives fully yielded to his will. Don't want to come to the end of this brief earth existence and look back with regret. I think I wasted it. Spent too much time pursuing my interests, my plans, my pleasures. Didn't take the time to know God's will for my life, pursue it actively, embrace it wholeheartedly. Failing to do so, <clears throat> it's to my own detriment. And we shouldn't leave it there. We should always consider, anytime I'm doing my will, my life has not been available to the Lord to be a blessing to the people that he has put in my life. Don't want to live life with regret. On the contrary, we want to live life knowing that we're in the center of his will. Amen? Our, our pursuit, our prayer should be, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
You want to see God honored and glorified in your life, in this earth? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He is, he is saying that our lives are to be directed toward the advancement of his kingdom. Our will is to embrace his will. Our will is to, to his will is for us to know his will and do it. To pursue it. To seek the advancement of his kingdom in that we preach the gospel, we make disciples, we live righteous lives, we raise up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, we make sure that we're prepared as a chaste virgin for Jesus' soon return. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Is that the way you start your day? Is that the way you walk through your day? You walk through each and every day and then you, you've walked through your life that way. Amen? Yeah. Pursuing God's purpose. His plan. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We talked of Jeremiah 29. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Does that matter? Is that important to us? God's got some thoughts with regard to our lives. He's got a plan. Thinks, he, he says, thoughts of peace. I want peace, not of evil to give you an expected and a desirable future. Is that good? Is that good news? Do you want what God's got for you? Oh, sometimes we're not so sure that we want what God's got for us. He might, yeah, he might send us, you know, to Somalia, like we said, right? Do you want to know God's will? Are you convinced that it's always infinitely superior to anything you could come up with on your own? God's way is better than our way. He says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, he knows them. Do you want to know them? Do, 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 do we consider asking God, what are the thoughts that you think toward me? What is your plan for my life? Sometimes we might tend to think, well, I've already given him my all. I gave up this, I gave up that. All you gave up was going to hell. That's what you gave up for Jesus. You gave up your death sentence. You were damned, condemned already because you hadn't believed. And now you've come to know the life of Jesus Christ. You've been rescued, redeemed. And now rightly, we're to live unto him which died for us and rose again for us. Amen? Amen. Live our lives fully consecrated, fully oriented toward the Lord. <clears throat> I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end, a desirable end. I know the thoughts. Do you know them? Do you know the thoughts that he thinks toward you? You want to know them. We should consider these things. Amen? Deuteronomy 32, I don't know that we turned there, but <clears throat> remember that his plan is a perfect plan. <clears throat> he is the rock. His work is perfect. <clears throat> All his ways are perfect. Justice, a God of truth without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. So you're not going to improve upon his plan. His way is perfect. Amen? Of course, Isaiah 55, he says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We don't have full and complete understanding. God understands better than we do. Sometimes it, things, it seems like things are, are, aren't going well. They didn't go right. And you thought, man, I, I'm just trying to honor God with my life. And it looks like, you know, the, the bottom fell out. It all just came crashing on down. His ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. His ways are higher, infinitely higher. Do you trust him? Do you want to know his ways? Do you believe that his ways are, are higher and nobler and pure? And always his ways are ways that lead to blessing and benefit for his people. Do you believe that? We're talking about God's will. Knowing God's will and doing God's will. Do you want to know it? His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. Do you think sometimes, where was God? Or uh, 
why isn't he doing like God, God kind of things like he should be doing? Coming to the rescue, blessing, uh, being there for me? His ways are higher, aren't they? I'm thankful. I mention it all the time. I'm thankful for the, the, the parallels or the examples that he has given to us in natural relationships. You know, the infant child does not understand parental ways, do they? Nope, they don't understand the wisdom of the parent. The parent can say to that, you know, little babe that they're holding in their arms, <clears throat> my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. They don't understand. But a good parent is looking out for the well-being and providing well for that infant. Amen? Sure, so it is with our Heavenly Father. His thoughts are higher. His ways are higher. <clears throat> Proverbs 14, <clears throat> uh, 12, again, the way that seems right to a man, that's not the, the way you want to live your life. And God, again, God has not left us to fend for ourselves with regard to direction, the way that seems right. Oh, we've got our ideas. We've got our thoughts and we've got our plans, don't we? We've got ambition, you know, and I believe in myself. Just look yourself in the mirror and, you know, and, and convince yourself that you're just a success going somewhere to happen, right? Read another, if, if you're hard, having a hard time, just read another book. Just read, you know, you know listen to another uh, series, you know, about, uh, uh, about uh, self-help and positive confession and, and believing in yourself and, and uh, you know, people really try to get by on that. Some people really try to get by on that. Believing in themselves. And tragically, I mean, unbelievably, there are uh, professing Christian, professing evangelical Christianity <clears throat> is, uh, has been... Uh, just terribly, inexcusably corrupted and infected with that kind of psychology. God wanted you to feel good about you. God loves you. You should love you. Look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself. God loves you. Hey, you're just in agreement with God, right? You're God's creation. I'm God's creation. What God makes, everything he makes is perfect. Look at me. I can, God believes in me. I can believe in me. And it's just so oh, messed up. So messed up. Our eyes to be on him. We're to seek his glory. Amen? We should, we should be impressed with him. Well, as it comes to, as it would pertain to uh, how we live our lives, it's God's will. The way that seems right to you the plan that you came up with, the, the thing that you concocted in your pea brain, ends in death. Ends in death. So let's uh, find out what God's got to say. Amen? His will is what we are to seek. <clears throat> we talked of, yes, the, the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom, and if we'll... <clears throat> If we'll do his will, we'll know. And it brings us up to about where, where we finished up. We did uh, reference 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is the will of God, your sanctification, living a holy life, consecrated life. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's pick it up there then. <clears throat> Learn to love the will of God for our lives. Learn to love it. Learn to love it. The Bible says that the way of the transgressor is hard. But the path of the upright is like the dawning of the day. It just keeps getting brighter and brighter, doesn't it? Yeah? Do you love God's will? Are the commandments grievous? Is it a grief to... To be a Christian, you know, you've, you're, 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 you're not considering quitting, going back to the old decadent life you used to live, the godless life you used to live. <clears throat> but you're not having as much fun as you used to. 
And that's hard on you. And you longingly think of the good old days. You know, when we uh, had leeks and melons and ate bread to the full back in Egypt. The Bible is plain. That, you know, those pilgrims, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they, they would have found a way to go back. And you can too, can't you? Yeah, you could. But no, I don't want to do that, Pastor. I don't want to go back to Egypt. I... <clears throat> what do you want? Do you really fully want to know God's will? Whatever it might be. And give it your all. Is that really the way you want to live your life? Sadly, a lot of Christians try to settle for something less than that. They're not interested in going back to Egypt, you know, just totally uh, denying their faith, denying the Lord that bought them. But they want some of this world, too. They want to, you know, have some, have some fun doing the same, some of the same old things, just not to the extent that they did them. And what a mess. What about abandoning, fully abandoning every day any claim to our own lives and earnestly and wholeheartedly seeking his will? Psalm 40. <clears throat> Psalm 40. First we'll read verse 8, but then I want to go up and read down into verse 8. He says in verse 8 of Psalm 40, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. Is Christianity a delight to you? Man, I've never been having such a good time. Life has never been better. Is that the way you look at your life? Never been better. I delight to do thy will, O my God. He thy laws within my heart. Well, thankfully God can make this our heart if it's not our heart. If there is a, oh, you know, some of that remorse, uh, that uh, some, re some regret that I am not living life as fully as, as, uh, as I could as others. And, you know, just go over to Psalm 73. You know, you're not the, the first Christian to have to deal with that kind of stuff, Right? I mean, there the psalmist writes of, of looking longingly and uh, almost jealously at the, uh, at the prosperity of the wicked. It just seems everything's going right for them. And here I am serving God, and I got to deal with this, and I got to deal with that. And, yep, good people have to deal with those kinds of thoughts from time to time, don't they? But they're reminded of God, of the end of the wicked, and they're also encouraged by the Lord that, yep, that he is ever with us and we are ever with him. Amen? Amen. And there's nothing that can separate us from his love. But here he says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. And I put the emphasis on thy and, and very, very deliberately, very intentionally, because ours is always there to be reckoned with, isn't it? Our will God's will, those are opposing wills, aren't they? Except for when we exercise our will to embrace his will. Let's read down from verse, verse 5. <clears throat> Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. <clears throat> if, I were, if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Well, this sounds a little bit like the Jeremiah uh, 29 passage, doesn't it? The thoughts that he thinks toward us. Yeah. Thoughts that are to usward. Yeah. And then he goes on, he says, Sacrifice an offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Well, 
when you think of, well, certainly when, when you think of Leviticus, then you're going to think of offerings, aren't you? All the sacrificial offerings, all the animal sacrifices. If you think of uh, Judaism in Jesus' day and before, from the time, certainly from the time of Moses up through the time of Jesus, you think of temple worship and in no small part, animal sacrifice, right? That's a big part of their religion. Certainly there were sacrifices that were offered up for, for sins and for cleansing. There are sacrifices that are brought up to honor God at different feasts for thanks. Uh, perhaps it's just the, the, the first fruits of the harvest that would come on up and parts of them would be burned on the altar. A big part of their worship, a big part of their religion was animal sacrifices, wasn't it? Yeah. And here he says, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Well, that's such a major part of their religion. And, and here the psalmist writes, you're really not interested in those things? Well, I hope we can make some kind of parallel. God is not interested in just the mechanics, in just the form, is he? God's interested in our hearts. Isn't he? <clears throat> we could put it into some, some 21st century form. God really didn't desire you to hand out 15 gospel tracts and have 16 conversations with, with, Christ, with non-believers today, spend eight hours of prayer and uh, another 10 in Bible reading so that you could say you honored God and lived a Christian life. You think, Pastor Jim, all those things are good things. Well, all those things that, that, were, that the psalmist here is writing about, burnt offerings and sacrifices, those are all things that God told them to do. Aren't they? They were prescribed, they were commanded, they were, they were ordered by God. Weren't they? Just like you're reading your Bible and you're preaching the gospel and your prayer is. And if it goes no deeper than mere compliance with a letter, with some, some requirement, then God's not honored and pleased. He wants our hearts, doesn't he? We are to obey from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto us. Amen? Amen. It's all from the heart. <clears throat> then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. And then look what he says. I've preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. I'm preaching the gospel, preaching good news, telling people, about your righteousness and your holiness, letting the light shine. Because it's to be big in our hearts, isn't it? Do we delight to do the will of God? Or do we do it only uh, because it's obligatory? Only out of duty? Is that all that there is to our... Can we delight in doing God's will? Examine our hearts. We, we need to examine our hearts. As our... Hear me. <clears throat> We've already talked about fearing God and obeying him, right? You're to do what you're told, aren't you? Are you waiting until emotion comes along to obey? No. Nope, I'm going to, until I have this strong urge and burning desire to just give my all to Jesus, I'm going to continue to live the way I want to and just, you know, trust him that he'll change my heart. No, you obey him and trust him to change your heart. You do what you're told to do. Amen? Obey God. Fear God. And yes, the understanding follows, as will desire and delight. To do his will. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Thy law is within my heart. <clears throat> Learn to love his will. Oh, how love I thy law. Amen? 
I need to be taught. That's the next point. I need to be taught. You think you know the will of God? You need to be taught. <clears throat> Look at me over to Psalm 143. I need to be taught. I don't always do the will of God. I don't always know what to do. I want to look at this, this one first, Psalm 143, verse 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Teach me to do thy will. Notice that he is not saying, teach me thy will. He is saying, teach me to do thy will. There is a, dis a distinction to be made in our lives, isn't there? <clears throat> I remember <clears throat> it's, it's, it's told um, some years ago, the, uh, the, the individual who was at that time just a child, <clears throat> now grown up, recently married, actually, uh, youngster there in Sterling. It was Christmas time. It was like the night before Christmas. And, um, and all the presents were, you know, tucked away, maybe behind Dad's desk in his office, not yet out, you know, to be passed on out. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> or put under the Christmas tree, whatever they were, but they were all wrapped up and, and, and in the office. And um, the, the little one got in there and went to town. <laughs> Paper everywhere, ripped them all, ripped, opened up all the gifts. They were all wrapped, ready to go to the tree. Yep, opened them up them all. Well, Grandma came along, found, you know, just, hey, where's, where's that little one? Where, where, where is she? Found her in Dad's, Dad's office, just about buried in wrapping paper. Yeah. And Grandma is just horrified at what she's looking at there. You know, oh, my goodness sakes. She asked the little one, what were you thinking? I mean, this is just a little, little you, know, barely, you know, barely bigger than a toddler. You know what the little one says? Don't open the presents. <laughs> it's an honest answer. Don't open the presents. <laughs> yep, got that right. Uh, and this, this requires some, some real uh, honesty with ourselves. Are we doing what we know to do? He says, teach me to do thy will. He does not say here, teach me what your will is. He says, teach me to do it. Teach me to do it. I think uh, maybe not infrequently, we know what to do and need to be taught to do it. What parent hasn't experienced that with their kids? With me there? Sure, these kids know. They don't see whatever. They, they, they get out of bed in the morning, they're supposed to make their bed, carry their dirty laundry, put it in the hamper, whatever the assignment is. They're, they know this, they know what to, they're to do, don't they? They've been taught. Ask them. What are you supposed to do when you get out of bed in the morning? Make my bed. What are you supposed to do with that dirty laundry that's on the floor? Been there for the last month. Put it in the laundry room, in the hamper. Yeah. Yeah. They know what to do, don't they? Yeah. Kids. Kids. For six. <sighs> Teach me to do it. Teach me to do your will. So we need to square up to what we know and look to the Lord for his grace to do it. Amen. God doesn't do our obeying for us, does he? He will teach us to do. He will teach us. Don't make it a hard lesson to learn. Again, you know, just like, like kids. Kids can, 
Kids can be taught with verbal instruction. But sometimes that verbal instruction needs to be followed up with corporal punishment, doesn't it? So that they learn to do. Learn to do God's will. Yeah. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. I also brought along Psalm 86, verse 11. We need to be taught. Sometimes we need to be taught what the will of God is. Sometimes we know what the will of God is. We just need to be taught to do it. Here in Psalm 86, verse 11, Scripture says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Now, I wonder why he, the psalmist puts that last phrase in there, Unite my heart to fear thy name. Well, I guess it should be pretty plain to all of us. Sometimes there is in us a divided heart, isn't there? Yep. We know what we should be doing, don't want to do it. Know what we should be doing, refuse to do it. Teach me thy way, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I want an undivided heart. I want the conflict within to be gone. I purpose to do your will. Teach me your will, and I will walk in it. Teach it to me, and I'll do it. Yep. Uh, sometimes we might not like what we hear. We might not like the path that the Lord has laid out before us. But by his grace, we do it. Amen? And our prayers unite my heart. Are you convinced that God's way is the right way? Always knows the, the best, always has our best interest in mind? Then why should there be any internal turmoil? Why should there be any conflict of soul? Because you're not glorified yet. That's why to lug around a carcass with sin in your members. That's why. Because the flesh, flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. That's why. And so our prayer is, unite my heart to fear your name, to do as you would have me do. Teach me your way and I will walk in your truth. <clears throat> we need to be taught. We need to be taught the will of God. Sometimes we need to be taught to do what we know to do. And James... <clears throat> Verse 17, of course, there is, uh, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. So could this take place in the life of a Christian? They could know to do good and not do it? Yeah. Uh, all too often the testimony of Christians. They know what they should be doing and they don't do it. And that's sin. But I want us to read again. I'm going to ask you to go with me up to verse 13. Read down to verse 17, where he says, Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Well, we should know to seek God's will for our lives. Amen? And not presume that we, you know, that uh, we know, got a plan, you know, oh God, God yeah, I, I'm sure he's in full agreement with what I've I've, I've uh, come up with. No. His will is what we seek. God's will is what we want, what we delight in, what we desire. Amen? Not just, you know, okay, uh, God's given us a brain, let's use it, and, and uh, off we go. Expecting him to put his big uh, stamp of approval on it. Our heart attitude and what's coming out of our mouths should be, if the Lord wills. If the Lord wills. This is what we're going to do. Maybe you come on up with a plan. 
How many were saying that on Sunday? And we've known, most of us would know it from experience. God does not show up with the, uh, the 50 year plan in full color, technicolor detail all laid out before us, does he? No, no. We walk by faith. We're doing what we're doing in faith with this attitude of heart, if the Lord wills. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just tacking that on as some little, uh, 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 little addendum. Okay, if the Lord wills. But I know he does. This is my plan. This is my will. This has got to be God. Bless God, it's going to happen. <clears throat> God, like it or not, if the Lord wills. Now, we know better than to... Uh, with a, with a humble attitude of heart, we, we face our day and face decisions if the Lord wills. If the Lord wills. Amen? And we know to do that. And if we don't do that, that's sin. Amen? Look at over to Matthew 7. Doing God's will will cause us to inherit the kingdom of God. There's good news. Amen? Who would reasonably consider uh, that or expect to inherit the kingdom of God if they're not doing God's will? I mean, is that at all reasonable? To think that if you're doing your will, you're going to be welcomed into God's kingdom? From verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That's who gets into heaven. The one, not the religious person. Obviously, uh, the one that says, Lord, Lord, is at least a religious person, Right? They're not just some, uh, somebody who's denying God's existence. No, this is somebody who says, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If we're not, well, again, I'm referring back to verse 21, he that doeth the will of my Father. Anything other than the will of the Father should be considered iniquity. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon the rock. It's a wise thing, wise thing, amen, to do God's will. Don't be foolish. That'll come crashing down, won't it? The storms will come, the winds will blow violently, and that house is coming down. If you're doing your will, if I'm doing my will, but if I do the Lord's will for my life, if you do the Lord's will for your life, then you'll inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Do the will of God. You want to inherit the kingdom? Do God's will. Do God's will. <clears throat> Let me go to John, John 4. Doing the will of God gives vitality, life, to our whole being. Doing the will of God. This is the passage where Jesus is <clears throat> talking with a woman at the well, Jacob's well. They're in Samaria. They're, they're passing through Samaria. You know the geography. We've talked of it before. You're familiar with it. But <clears throat> uh, Jesus was from Galilee, which is in the north. Jerusalem is in the south. And in between the, those two is Samaria. So when he's up in Capernaum, he's up in the north. He's up um, <clears throat> uh, 
Chorazin, those are up in the north. Bethsaida, those are up in the north. And then down in the south are places like uh, Jerusalem and uh, Bethany. And, uh, and to get from one place to the other, you got to go through, we must needs go through Samaria, right? Yeah. And so there, they stopped at the well for something to drink and see if they could go into town and find something kosher <clears throat> for lunch. <clears throat> And the disciples come back. He's, Jesus has been talking with the woman at the well, talking with her about the kingdom of heaven and how the true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth and the, the Samaritans don't know what they worship. He says to the disciples, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. What is it that kept Jesus going, sustained him, strengthened him, just brought vitality to his life, his existence? Doing the will of the Father, fulfilling the will of the Father, just doing what God had called him to do. What do you thrive on? What brings meaning, purpose, vitality to, to your life? Is, it, uh, is, your, is your life all wrapped up in your occupation? Your home? Your hobby? Is that really what gets us, gets us up and, and uh, going? Well, if, if it is any of those things, and uh, we've already recognized that they are totally void of any ability to satisfy. We might try to uh, suck some life out of those things. They always leave us empty, don't they? The job and trying to advance and make, you know, make a name or make some money. and uh, It's just not there. So I'm going to take up fishing. I'm going to get a fishing boat. Now I'm going to learn how to catch the big ones and... Just have some, you know, some fun out on the lake on a sunny day and that's, I'm going to just really live. And never have a boat big enough, fast enough, shiny enough. You definitely won't catch fish big enough or enough of them. Somebody else got them. The other guy always caught the big ones. Life doesn't, life of that sort does not satisfy you know what satisfies? Doing the will of God. That satisfies. My meat, what strengthens me, what keeps me going. And again, don't we need to look at our lives and think about what's important and what's valuable and what, what's exciting to us and what's fulfilling and satisfying? It doesn't get any better than the will of God being walked out. You know that where we started just living life without regret? Uh, you can finish out your day and look back on your day and think, I walked in God's will and I'm glad of it. I did what God wanted me to do today. This is a good day. It's a good day. That's, I, I did what the Lord wanted me to do. And maybe you reflect on some decisions that you made. To, nope, not going to do that. That would be my will. I'm going to do this instead. I know this is what God's got for me. And you do that? That's good. That's good stuff. You're encouraged of the Lord. You're strengthened of the Lord. That's what he says. My meat. What, what keeps me going. What strengthens me. What nourishes me. Yeah, to do the will of my Father. Finish his work. That's, that's the... The plan of God, that's how the economy of God works. The, 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 it's, the, it's, it's the nature of our, our spirit existence with the Lord. Only, only the Lord satisfies. If it was a, it was a life that was, if it was a, a day that was empty and, and, uh, and, and worthless, then you weren't doing the will of the Lord. But you do his will. 
And you'll, you'll know and be encouraged by the Lord that yeah, maybe it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. Can you say that, no, I did what the Lord wanted me to do today. And you'll know his, his, his presence and his power, his strength, his encouragement. Amen? Vitality is ours. It's a life doing the will of the, of the Lord, his will for our lives. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me to finish his work. Of course, he, he says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He's just talking about, hey, <clears throat> there is always work in front of us, the work of the kingdom. Amen? Seek first his kingdom. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal. Doing the will of the Lord, that's gathering life, <clears throat> gathering fruit unto life eternal. Look at me over to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> we need to be on guard against the wisdom of this world, the will of the, of the enemy. The enemy's always looking to sow his will, his thoughts, his ways into our lives, corrupting them. We're trying to live undefiled and purely consecrated, aren't we? And the devil wants to get us off course. A little bit here, a little bit there. Oh, maybe he's not been effective at totally dominating and, and bringing devastation to your life. But is it, is it purely consecrated? This is the will of God for your, your life, isn't it? Your sanctification, pure and complete consecration of our lives to the Lord. He says here in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Well, if you're not, if, if I am not, if we are not living lives uh, presented to the Lord as a living sacrifice, then we are being conformed to this world. We're, because the, how does the world do things? Well, they have yeah, the way that seems right to a man, which is going to be demonically inspired, sin-influenced, isn't it? It's, it's, it's one or the other. It's either of God or it's of the devil, isn't it? The, there's a wisdom that descends from above, pure, perfect, peaceable, easy to be entreated, right? And then there's a wisdom of this world. Their ways, their values, and we're not to be conformed to the smallest degree. I mean, yes, uh, I speak in absolute terms because the scripture speaks in absolute terms. How consecrated should we be? How completely should we be devoted to the will of God for our lives? How much of his will do we want to do? Don't be conformed to this world. This world uh, is, is looking to get Christians, the devil is looking to get Christians to conform to their ways, even in the smallest way. Rendering you ineffective or less than fully effective. We could use a, uh, a, 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 a military or battle type <clears throat> uh, example. I mean, if, uh, if you've got a soldier who is injured, then they're less than fully effective in the fight, aren't they? Yep, they are. They might still, you know, have their allegiance to their, to their land and be doing uh, what they can, but they're impaired because they've been injured. Well, how about the Christian who's had their minds uh, uh, brought under the influence of worldly thinking? Don't be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is that what we're in pursuit of? The perfect will of God. The perfect will of God for our lives. Something other than that is, is, uh, is the wisdom of the world and we're, we're allowing this world to conform us to its ways. Don't. Present your all as a living sacrifice to God. Don't be conformed to the world, but <clears throat> demonstrate that in your complete consecration, you're going to fulfill God's will. Demonstrate God's will purely, perfectly. Something less than that. Other than, something other than that is something less than that. You with me there? Other than full consecration is, is less than God's best for us. And we are being conformed to this world, <clears throat> at least to a measure. Look with me to one more passage of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 5. Be on guard against the wisdom of this world, which is the will of the enemy for our lives. The scripture is just full of references to the will of God. And no small <clears throat> wonder the, <clears throat> the way God made us, he gave us a will. And it's in the exercise of that will that our, our course is established, isn't it? We make choices. Don't be unwise, but understand the will of God. From verse 14 of Ephesians 5, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. <clears throat> How are we going to? Well, wake up. Open up your eyes. Take a look around. Get your eyes on Jesus. See what's going on in the world. Maybe grow a little bit wiser with regard to your own tendencies, the, the, the sinful tendencies. Make no provision for them. Exercise yourself unto godliness. <clears throat> Walk circumspectly. Take a look around. See what's going on. Do you just stumble through your Christian walk? Or is your face set, your course clear? Don't be unwise. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. I brought this along from the Amplified. And I know that we're, it's getting late, but <clears throat> here we go. Therefore, he says, awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine, make day dawn upon you, and give you light. Look carefully, then, how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily. And accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people. For a Christian, is there anything more intelligent than full surrender of our lives to Jesus' lordship and God's will for our lives? Would it be hard to consider? Would it be extreme to consider that anything less than that is foolishness. God's got a plan, a perfect will, and we're going to live below that deliberately, intentionally, or just recklessly, carelessly? What's the wise thing to do? What's the wisest thing that a human being could do? Know God and follow him 
purely, perfectly, implicitly. Amen? Sure. Do his will. That's the smartest thing, to, the, the wisest thing for a person to do. Do the will of God. Let's be wise people. Amen? Let's not be unwise. Let us be wise people. Do what God's got for us. Anything less other than that is, is vastly, infinitely inferior to that. Look carefully, then, how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Doing God's will is what we're talking about. Make the most of every opportunity. Make the best use of your time. <clears throat> the days are evil. Don't squander the minutes, the hours, the days. Make good use of them. How? Do what God's got for you. Choose his will. Choose his will over your own will. Let us follow his commandments. Jesus' lordship. Purposefully, worthily, accurately is the way we're to live. Amen? Not as fools, but as wise. Taking every opportunity, full advantage of every opportunity. Using the minutes and the hours that are compiled into days and weeks and months and years and you've lived life well and you don't have to have any regrets when it's all said and done. Just honor God now. Amen? Amen. Let's trust him for that grace. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as a good father, we know and are sure that you know our needs very well. You know our ways. You know our thoughts. You know about all our tomorrows. You know the decisions that we have made the ones that we will make, how we need your help and the guidance of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord God. Do help us, O oh Lord. Help us to know your will. And then, O oh Lord, when we know it, help us to do it. Help us to guard against the stupor, the, the slumber that you refer to. We, we know just what you're talking about, Father God. We, we allow ourselves to get a little bit too busy and caught up and we don't consciously think about your will. We need to sober up and think clearly. And yes, live purposefully and deliberately. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. May that ever be the prayer of our hearts, Father. And we will trust you for the help that we need, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be sure and greet one another in the love of the Lord Jesus. God's grace and peace go with you all.